This is Twit. Intel just announced nine i9 processors. So Intel traditionally, historically, has been unable to cross four gigahertz. <laughs> they can't get below 10 nanometers. They can't. So I think they've given up on the 10 nanometers, honestly. They yep. say they're going to do them, but I'll they be. haven't. Well, they're, they're trying. No one's, no one's denying they're trying. Uh, you've got companies like TSMC making seven nanometer processors. But anyway, okay, I'm just saying. Uh, but Intel has apparently been able to crack the four gigahertz barrier. They are now, this is an i9, the 9900KS, yeah. eight yeah. cores, all of which can run at five gigahertz all the time. Well, I mean, and this is actually a big deal because, you know, the, you always see it, it's you know, it's running at like 1.3 gigahertz and 2.7 gigahertz in turbo speed, mode. Yeah. Speed step or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But, it, you know, and it's like basically, okay, for one brief moment, your processor will shoot up to this fast, one, well, one core. Right. Mm. Of your process. And then will thermals will shut it down immediately. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like it basically makes something move a little faster than it might otherwise. You know, if this is, I mean, this is directly, um, yeah. <laughs> This would be very exciting if it's true. Yeah, and I, I, I want to see I want to see benchmarks on these. I want to see benchmarks on these. Of course, of the Ryzen. I want to yeah. see the Ryzen three, right? Which is going to be the coming AMD out. Part. Yeah, which is going to be coming out like you know seven 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 that. nanometers. They, we've seven. got the AMD Intel competition is bad. Oh yeah. Well, it, but, but it's, it's more because Intel stumbled. Yep. Than because AMD is so great. Maybe yes, no. AMD is doing some extraordinary things Good. right now. Don't don't take any credit away from Dr. Sue and the okay. team at AMD. They okay. they are doing some badass engineering. They're also doing some badass pricing. And yes, Intel left a badass door the size of a house for them to drive through. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. You know, Intel Intel for a long time was like, you know, they, 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 you, Ryan and I used to talk about this before he went to go work at Intel. Um, now about just, how Intel... What are you talking about, Patrick? I don't know anything. You know, the know uh, it's, it, NDAs are fine. and uh, But the... Uh, but what we would talk about is is that Intel didn't really care about PC users. They didn't really care about PC power users, especially. What was their market? Well, the, the majority. Of, no, well, I mean, so they make a ton, they make a ton of money in a lot of places. We don't want to get that granular, right? But Not in terms mobile. of that's the only thing of, I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, so what happened, right? Is 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 you know, Intel, much like Microsoft, never really made it in handhelds and mobile. Right. And that was a huge problem because they the try. vast majority of the planet is going to interface with the internet and computers in the form of a phone. That said, you know, and then they, well, okay, so we're going to do, we're going to do Raspberry Pi competitive. Well, that didn't seem to work out. We're going to, okay, we have this amazing. Oh, yeah, they killed that, the Edison, right? Yeah, yeah. they killed a lot of stuff. Yeah, and, well. and they went back like, oh, you know, we can make really fast processors for enthusiasts and professionals. Ooh, but the majority of the market, though, is actually laptops, yeah. you know, and, and laptops you know in a certain price range. I love my MacBook Air, which is running a U processor. Right. It is slow, but yeah. it doesn't seem slow. <laughs> I have a, I have the $5,000 iMac Pro on my desktop. I don't go running in there when I want to do something because yeah. I have my nice, thin, light MacBook Air. I'm very happy. Hey, when I'm browsing the web, a laptop is Most fine. of what we yeah. do, 90% of what we do, it doesn't need fast anything faster than what we than these. It gets browsers. a little messy when you get into you photography, know, gaming, video, level, yeah. rendering, gaming. Yeah. I have a confession. When I do call time, I have Final Fantasy 14 opened up on my oh, Mac most of the time. don't say this. You're going to know that. <laughs> Don't no, no, but no it's videos, like you're no doing video. you're doing graphics. So Where's I do, your campaign manager? I do keep that open on my Mac as so we're going. We so, should explain call yeah. time is something that that is the great shame of the United States of oh, America. Oh, it's horrible! It's horrible. Which is that most a significant percentage of the time that anybody elected in an elected office, at least yeah. at the federal level, spends calling donors asking for money. Right. Shaking the money tree. Oh, it's true. And it's called call time. It's called call time. It's got to be the most the miserable thing. time of year. How, uh, how much time do you oh, have to spend? Oh, I actually love it. I oh, love it. I've grown to it. love it. Uh, but there is a lot of downtime between each call. So that's so, where Zelda right, comes Right, that's in. where I'm doing that. But my point with this <laughs> is, you know. I, it's so, I, just, I, I just love that vision of you. So again, you're gonna like this well, thing. it's your uh, crafting in Final Fantasy we've 14. Got, yes. <laughs> we've got, uh, I don't know who we got. We've got uh, the uh, the Koch brothers on line three. <laughs> no, okay, hold on a second. They will not. Okay, the Koch brothers are on line three. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm almost there. The Koch brothers on line three. I'll just screw it. I'm busy. So we would say that to the. My, my point is, though, um, okay. I am interested. George Soros on line four. I, I would pick up okay, that call. Um, my point is, I do think that there is a, I, I personally have a need for better uh, processors in my MacBooks. But the fact that 
Apple has really handicapped uh, the processor architecture with the thermal design. It, and the I MacBook. don't think it's Apple's fault. In fact, Apple yeah. at their quarterly call said we we would have made more, we would have sold more, but we couldn't get the parts. They didn't name really? Intel, but they knew. But everybody knew this is Apple effectively spanking Intel because but Intel is, is not Apple that could have given a rat's ass about the computer lines right. for what the better part of a decade because yeah. most of their money came from I'm iPhones. Not yeah, and the but store. I'm not sure that. I think Apple would have liked to have done better and more because they, you know, Mac is important to them at, both internally because sure. everybody uses a Mac at, at Apple, but also to developers. You can't, you don't get any Mac OS or iOS software if, if developers right. don't have Macs. I have literally melted two MacBook Pros running Maya, which is a very heavy 3D program on a MacBook Pro because the thermals are so bad oh, and the heat eventually caused right. the logic board to fail. But so, it's silent. <laughs> right, exactly. So, um, you okay, know, I'll grant you when, that. when they're talking about the new Intels in the, the new 15-inch that they just launched, I'm like, I, I have to admit, Leo, my, I was like, what's the freaking no. point? I well, have, is, I, but it's also, I mean, I, yeah. was, I had my finger poised over the buy button until I looked over to the right and it said $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I went, whoa. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, I'm buying Windows PCs because yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't bring myself to buy, I can't use these keyboards. I can't bring myself to buy what Apple's making. Mm -hmm. I just bought a, a ThinkPad X1 uh, Extreme, which I'm very happy with. And it I just really put Linux on it. Yeah, because I, I I'm not crazy about Windows either, but Linux is pretty damn good these days. Yeah. and it's amazing because we we've installed a Linux. Uh, you know, Shannon's installed Linux on a bunch of laptops in the past few months, and it's amazing how, you know, it used to be like I'm going to install. It's a very complete yeah. experience. Now. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a real desktop operating system. Lately, I've been using Pop. Well, it's OS. got support for you know. I mean, it's it not like you're like oh Nvidia, I can't use. It supports all yeah. this weird non-free stuff. I've been using Pop OS, which is System 76's spin on. Ubuntu, which is a spin on Debian, and I'm not, I don't like that aesthetically, but it installs everywhere. It runs very well on everything. And suddenly, you know, and, and, and there's analogs for everything. And if you want to use Microsoft Office, they have a very credible web app that runs just fine. All the Office apps run just fine on the web, or you can use Wine if you want, if you really need it, or you can use LibreOffice. There's plenty. I'm using Darktable and Raw Therapy instead of Photoshop and Lightroom. Really? There's, yes. Mm. Actually, raw therapy is very good. I would recommend. I'll give it, it a go. I've never. I don't want to give Adobe yeah. anymore. My. Uh, oh, it's terrible. Ever since they moved to cloud computing, no, it's it's terrible. Terrible. well, the cloud, uh, Creative Cloud service. Yeah. I do keep uh, Windows running on that ThinkPad in a small partition because yeah. there's a few Windows apps. You know, mostly it's Tetris ninety nine. Tetris yeah. ninety nine. <laughs> There we go. So this uh, i9 9900KS, we don't know what the TDP will be. Uh, it's going to be more than 95 watts, I'm thinking. <laughs> I don't know how much more. A non-tech says 10% maybe. Right. Right. Not even not even 150 watts. Well, but we've also seen a lot of TDPs where when you actually flat everything out, um, the actual power consumption is considerably higher than the TDP. You could light up yeah. Manhattan with the power. Not quite, <laughs> but certainly a room. Does, Intel has yeah. uh, kind of muddied the water a little bit from last year's Computex. By the way, Computex is coming up. That's why this yeah. conversation mm, is going on. Mm. Uh, they, they kind of pretended that they were running a 28-core Xeon CPU at five gigahertz, but they were using a lot of cooling, the Sub Zero chiller, um, and maybe there was there wasn't even uh, all of the information like overclocking and stuff. Yeah, the other thing that gives me a pause about Intel is you know after Spectrum Meltdown came out, basically you know vulnerabilities in the right. Intel processor speculative with speculative execution, ex yeah, yeah. and we we got a whole new um, basically list of uh, vulnerabilities that came out. Yeah, Zombieland. The new one yeah. is Zombieland. Yeah, I was really about, surprised. We were talking about this. Zombie week. Load. Zombieland is a yeah. great movie. <laughs> Zombie. <laughs> Don't feel to, bad. I did the same thing in the title three times. <laughs> not to be confused with the movie Zombieland. Uh, no, Zombie Load, and it's, it takes advantage of speculative execution. And the real yeah. problem is that when you turn off speculative execution or you somehow mitigate these threats, you cut performance by... In most cases, significant. Yeah, like, right. More than noticeable amount. Isn't it just in like cloud computing applications? That's where it's a generally? problem. Generally, but yeah. Steve Gibson on Security Now, and I'm sure you say the same thing, Patrick, says end users don't really need to worry about it. We haven't seen any exploits in the wild. Mm. If you're running a uh, a server, multiple yeah. users on one processor, absolutely, because 
any one of those processes could be malicious. Right. But it's it's hard to get a malicious process on my computer at home. Hmm. That could yeah. that could then hey. get the right chunks of data. Sounds that like it a needed. challenge for someone out there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I may be wrong, but I don't think yeah. there are any exploits in the wild. It was it was it was discovered, it was patched, and then it was announced. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, yeah. but I mean, we've seen we've seen numbers anywhere from three to nine percent for for typical home user scenarios with a patch to as much as forty percent. A lot of the numbers we heard were for the latest generation and the latest model processors. Uh, That's scary. And, and but and then as they get older it tends to have a more dramatic impact yeah. on performance yeah no kidding um, and my, i asked steve this and he thinks it's possible i'm not sure it's possible to mitigate in a newer design uh without turning off speculative execution there's so, he says you can and i don't know enough about processor design but mm -hmm. he says that it is the, the flaw is this leakage of information between processes and he says it's completely possible to still have speculative execution but to have policies in place that keep information from going to I feel comfortable yeah. in saying a, a lot of people that are much smarter than I will ever be are working furiously at that problem with staggering yes. amounts yeah. of money behind yeah. them right now yes um, isn't the problem with the ring states for the processor and not the speculative oh execution interesting itself so that's, yeah that's I know the I leakage I don't know where the leakage occurs yeah and then it's I mean it's, hackers are good these days I mean it's things like and by the way, these are mostly white hat hackers because the black hats are just using scripts. But the white hat hackers, people like Tavis Ormond, they seem to be able to, using fuzzing and all sorts of interesting techniques. Mm. Uh, the timing techniques are the ones that, that amaze me. Yeah, I'm not even, I've, I. <laughs> it's hard, it's hard to believe it even works, but it does.